Hi, I'm Chris Cruel, uh, interviewing Sam Blackman, CEO of Elemental Technologies. And Sam, if you could explain for us uh, what is it that Elemental Technologies is about and uh, who do you serve in the marketplace? You bet. So Elemental Technologies is the leading provider of massively parallel video processing systems. Essentially what we do is take advantage of massively parallel graphics processing units to get great video processing performance for our customers. And our customers are the tier one content providers, folks like ABC News or CBS Interactive, and content distributors, folks like Comcast Media Center and News Press and Gazette. So um, I know that your business today is a little bit different from what you first started out to do. Could you describe that path a little bit? Well, I think every startup goes through transitions mm -hmm. as they, they learn and get feedback from the market. and the absolute key to success in any startup is agility and being flexible and responding to the market. In Elemental's case, we really had one significant technology transition. Okay. And we're pretty fortunate to only have had one. But we went from a uh, plan to build our own integrated circuits, right. our own transcoding chips, to taking advantage of NVIDIA GPUs to do the transcoding on uh, existing mm -hmm. off-the-shelf piece of hardware. And so that was a transformative decision on the technology side. Our, our core technology was completely different than what we'd initially started out to do. Yeah. So when you uh, made the, the shift in uh, where your business was focused, you chose to build this codec on top of, or the, the, you build your stack on top of GPUs. Right. Um, can you talk a bit about uh, bringing GPUs to bear in this particular marketplace? Does it let you do things on a different kind of scale than could be done before? So yeah, we had a, a thesis when we started the company that GPUs had this very nice parallel architecture. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, CUDA came out, the operating yep. the, the platform from NVIDIA that allows you to write massively parallel code in C. Right. So you don't have to use a specialized programming language like you did in the past of okay. OpenGL or, or something mm -hmm, else. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of video processing elements that map very nicely to a parallel architecture. In a codec itself, it's things like motion estimation, motion okay. compensation, uh, discrete cosine transform, basically anything at the macro block level, uh -huh. of which uh, a compressed video has literally hundreds or thousands of macro blocks per frame. And when you can take advantage of a massive parallel architecture, you can operate on each of those macro blocks simultaneously, okay. as opposed to doing them one at a time, right. which is how a standard serial architecture works. So we thought there was a really good chance that the GPU would be very good for tech typical video processing applications. And the codecs are one side, but there's also the image processing. So things like scaling, noise reduction, color space conversion, right. frame rate conversion. And by really leveraging the GPU in tandem with the CPU, because there are certain parts of the algorithms that run much faster on a serial architecture, mm -hmm. you can get an optimized heterogeneous solution that provides kind of the best of both worlds, performance of specialized dedicated hardware with software flexibility. OK, OK. You know, I have to admit that as I started looking at elemental technologies and what you're trying to do, that uh, somebody hadn't jumped on that approach before, especially since in the high performance computing space, the supercomputing space, the trend has been toward building large systems out of off the shelf technologies. And NVIDIA has been around for a little while, so mm -hmm. I was actually surprised to find out you guys were first to do what you're the doing. First, right, yeah. Well, it, it's interesting. I mean, in 2007 when we started the actual GP programming, CUDA had just been released to the public at mm -hmm. the end of 2006. So before that, we found a lot of academic studies where folks had tried to do this using okay. the older ways of programming GPUs. Okay. Uh, and there were some, some languages that had been developed over time, Extreme SDK and, and some others, that were much lower level. And when you program GPUs and, and running kernels, you're sending off many, many threads to be run simultaneously. And right. one of the things that CUDA does is it lets you synchronize those threads it, the, the compiler and the driver handles this thread synchronization. You don't have to do it manually. Well, before you had that, you had teams of programmers trying to figure out how to keep everything sure. synchronized so they sure. didn't have deadlock conditions. And so you'd have a, just one little piece of a codec would be an academic you know, five-person team for three years to mm -hmm. make it work. Mm -hmm. okay. And they did show some great GPU speedups, which gave us a lot of hope. And so the key was, will CUDA make it easy enough that a small startup programming team right. can actually write a complete usable solution right. on this platform. Okay. And that was the hard part. That was okay. kind of the leap. Okay. So uh, 
over the past several years, you've learned a lot about starting a company, running a company, growing a company. Um, there's a lot of people out there today with great ideas on technologies that they want to bring to the marketplace or might have, there might be a seed out there. Any advice that you could provide to people uh, who, were, who are in a similar situation as to where you were a few years back? Yeah. I actually have people ask me that pretty uh -huh. often, so yeah, it's a, yeah. a question I've thought a lot about. And the key learning for Elementals co-founders in 2006 and 2007 is that you need to focus on customers first and investors second. I think a lot of startups use the, they kind of think of it as, okay, I'm going to go raise a million dollars from a venture capitalist or an angel fund, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to start building my product and get customers, et cetera, right. et cetera. Right. We kind of tried that route at the end of 2006 okay. with our semiconductor idea, and it's incredibly difficult. There's probably entrepreneurs that can make that work, mm -hmm. but there are probably entrepreneurs that have made investors money many times before, okay. or at least a couple times before. Yeah. I don't think the average person is going to be able to raise capital without having customers and a proven business model, or at least kind of a fairly fairly obvious way of, of making revenue. So the, the, the real key is have enough capital yourself to be able to build that first product and get customers interested, okay. and then go to investors to okay. raise money. And that's, okay. that's kind of the lesson we learned. And we, we lost several months at the beginning talking to investors before we'd sure. done much technical work or proven anything with the customer. Mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm. was a very Well, there's a little learned. bit of that chicken and egg process, right? Because you do need to start getting yourself familiar with what does it take to raise capital, right? And for you to determine your fundraising strategy. And maybe, maybe. Okay. I'm pretty skeptical at this point. Like, I'm yeah. pretty much saying if you're going to start a company, tell yourself, I'm going to go without salary for two years. Okay and I'm going to get it built and I'm going to get the first customers in. Right. And then I'm going to raise capital and see myself getting paid two years in. Yep. And I think you know, just having that, that realistic approach, you know, that, that you've got to go with that mindset. If you think you're going to be able, like three months or six months, you should be making money and you know, getting compensated, like, that's <laughs> really <laughs> tough. That is really tough. Yes, and so yes. trying to set new entrepreneurs' expectations correctly is so important. Okay. We had ours reset time and time again. Mm -hmm. And Great. if I ever did it again, <laughs> <laughs> that would be that much further ahead in the game. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's you gotta, just got to go with that mentality. Great. Great. 